complicated situation. Belgium, you know, they, they hate each other, the, the Walloons and the Flanders or whoever they are, but they don't talk. Czechoslovakia divided, like, you take Slovakia, we'll take Czech. <laughs> but America can't do that. But we're going to be living in that kind of country. We've yeah, always are. lived in that country. No. It's, hold on, it's federalism. If you think that Alabama is always going to have the same politics as Illinois or Oregon, you know, but the same so laws. We only devolve these decisions to the states. That's the genius of the American system. There doesn't have to be one consistent national opinion on everything. And we go crazy. We're not talking about opinions. We're talking about laws. Well, the problem is that the pendulum is swinging further and further to the left and the right. So every time the right passes some draconian bill, whether it is about abortion or trans kids or, or something like that, the left goes and does the opposite. There's okay. no center. There's no... There's no center. There's Which you write about often. <laughs> and, and, I mean... Bill, America, until today, is the only Western country to have abortion as a constitutional right. No other, not even Canada, not Germany, not any of the other liberal countries. They did it by democratic rule. And the Congress could do it today if they wanted to pass a law saying abortion is illegal in, illegal in every state. But they don't have the votes because this country is divided. This case that forced this decision, Dobbs, was a case that said that abortion should be legal for 15 weeks. Do you, know what the, do you know what the legal limit in Germany is? I know. They're, 12 they're, weeks. Right. But they also have Europe, they Western Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Say what? They also have health care for everybody. Well, that's so fair enough. Women are more likely to find out that they're pregnant. They're more likely to have access to the things that they need to get an abortion or to keep a child apart. But they haggle it out and come to a compromise with some restrictions and some but we, freedoms. But that's what I'm talking about. There's no... I mean, the Texas Republican Party had their convention this week. Among the things they said, I mean, some were fairly predictable for a red state Republican convention that the last election is not legitimate, which we get used to, but is outrageous. Secession, completely on the table. They should go for it. Go for it. Get rid of Texas. See, that's such... <laughs> no, no, no. It's a bullshit argument. You can't get rid of... You're going to get Austin, too? Oh, they can the, take Austin. It's a, that's a, I'm sorry. It, it's a fist. I guess you're kidding. I hope you're kidding. Because it, first of all, it's not possible. It's never going to happen. Well, I don't know. Half the country, I read last week in a poll, thinks they will see a civil war in their lifetime. And when that half, I think a lot of them see a civil war or rooting for one. I think a lot of them are actually rooting for it. Whatever it is, they also, listen to this, uh, homosexuality, they said, is an abnormal lifestyle. I mean... So we're back to the 80s on that. This is the country they want. Clarence Thomas put it in the ruling today. We are going back to, and I'm telling you, this is two different countries. You, yeah, but I, on the issues like abortion, say, let's take that. This is actually a great opportunity for liberals, for pro-choice, pro-choices. The country is not in favor of banning all abortion. Only 13% want that. So go out there, persuade people, and what, what this ruling does is call the religious rights bluff. They've always been able to say, this is terrible, must be banned. They've never had to face the consequences of such a ban. And now they will make the argument, build the coalitions, win the elections in the states, and get pro-choice policies back. <laughs>